Okay, so today's daf is daf Lamed Aleph in Gittin, as we learn for a fortune for Allah ben Ruma and Yosef Israel ben Chaim Michal. Says the Mishnah, What happens is this. We learned yesterday that when you take Chumas and Maestros, you should have everything in front of you. Now, it could be acres and acres of piled up produce or wine or whatever the thing is, or oil, the things that you take Chumas and Maestros, some or Isa, or Drabonans, if it's fruits, like you're talking about, you eat fruits, payros, truma uh, drabonan. But in any case, when you take it should all be in front of you, and then you take, you separate the part that's true, and you take the part that's Meister Risha, Meister uh, Shani, or Meister Ani. That's how you should do it. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes you have fruits and vegetables and grains in one location, and you're in another location, and now you just got this stuff. And let's say you have the stuff back in your barn at home. And you had so uh, you had some grain there that was tevel. Hadn't yet taken from us a mice. So you said you'll do it all together. Maybe it was there of Shabbos right now sometimes, and you don't have time to go back and get it all together. So in a pinch, even though the chili is showing you if it's all together, sometimes the circumstances are such. Maybe he has many, many farms, maybe the stuff is you know spread out, maybe it's Arab Shabbos and he doesn't have time to put it all together. So he's in location number two. Location number one is his barn where he has some. He has some grain there, and he's in location number two. Now, he wants to take Trumas and Maestros from number one in the barn, back at the barn, that he left these out in the field somewhere, days away from his barn, and he wants to eat the food in location number two. So he says, okay, the Trumas, uh, I'm going to take grain that I have set aside already, not yet separated, but it's all Tevo. Tevo means it hasn't been Trumas and You can't take, once you took Trumas and Maestros, it's already cool and it's ready to eat. You can't take it again from the same the same produce on new produce that hasn't yet been separated. So you have produce in location number one and in location number two where you are now. And you want to eat the stuff in location number two. So you want to take trumas and maestros from there. You could do it in reverse. You could take trumas and maestros from this on that. But you could. But let's say you chose to take trumas and maestros from the stuff in the barn in number one on number two. Can you do that? So Manif Paris, he left Paris in location number one. Leo Smafra Shalan, Trumas and Maestros, he says, you know, when I get to my new location and I have only a little bit of food there, let's say I'll take Trumas and Maestros for what I have in number one in the barn on this. Can you do that? You did that. Again, you should only do it when it's all together, but you could do it under circumstances. You could do this to Badia about. So Manif Paris, Leo Smafra Shalan, Trumas and Maestros. Or let's say I have Maestro Shani. What's the rule with Maestro Shani? Remember, my Sarishan is the 10% that you take from the whole thing. You started with 100, you gave two, let's say, to Truma, two measures you gave to uh, Truma, took 10, give my Sarishan, then what's left from the 90, let's say, from the 90, you take my Sarishani, 10% of that, which is nine, and my Sarishani. What do you do with my Sarishani? Take it up to Shalayan, but if it's too big, too heavy, whatever, you change it into money. So let's say you had some money set aside in your safe or in your desk drawer. And he said, okay, that I'm, I'm taking this food, this is my shane. I want to eat it now, right? I want to eat it now. I can't go to Yerushalayim. I'll redeem it onto the, onto the money that I have in my desk drawer. And I'll take the money up to Yerushalayim. That's what he did. And he was able to eat the food now. My sir, uh, again, most Leos Mafrashlein, my sir, shane. Mafrashlein, you can do that. The Ches Kishen Kayamen. What is this Misha doing over here? The same thing we said yesterday. Why are we talking about if you lend money to a coin or a levy, you remember, and he's going to pay you back with the Chumas and Maestros, it said that it's only if he's around. If he's not around, if he died, what do you do? Well, the answer is, if he's not here in front of you, you can assume he's alive. However, if you found out that he's dead, then we had the circumstances we discussed yesterday. All this is brought down because of the previous Mishnah that we had two days ago that talked about that if you bring a get from overseas and uh, you, you left the husband and he was sick, you can assume he's still alive. Unless he was a ghost, says you can assume rov, rov, uh, unless he was a ghost, says. And in general, even if it took you months to travel, you can assume that he was still alive. There was a chazaka that he was alive, presumption that he was alive. And the same thing over here yesterday, we talked about the Kohen Levi, presumption they're alive. And here we're talking about the, 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 the produce that you left back in the barn or the money that you left in your desk at home in your office we can assume that's still there too, right? I left it over there, I can assume it's there. So all these cases, it's an assumption, right? That what I left, uh, that's the chazaka, that what I left there is probably still there. So again, it says the Mishnah, I left Paris in bar number one, that I'm going to separate from from them on the stuff that I have here in location number two. Or mostly, I took some money in my desk, I'm going to redeem 
the Maisu Shenim going to be put to that, transfer its Kedusha onto the money. You can assume there are. Im Avdu, let's say that you went back home now. You went back to bar number one. It was gone. <laughs> the stuff I thought I was taking from us, my sister, I was giving that to the Cohen and the Levy. It's gone. Not there. What do you do now? Or the money's gone, right? In case of my Shani, Im Avdu, I raise a Choshish Me'esh La'esh Dibra Abelazer. So Abelazer says, and there's some of the missions that we'll see Rabbi ben Shamua. He was the author. He was a Tana that we find. We find Rabbi, L- Rabbi Eliezer is usually Rabbi Eliezer ben Hirkanis. Rabbi Lazar in the Mishnah is Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua. We'll see another Rabbi Lazar in the Gemara. But Rabbi Lazar says over here that, so what do you do if you find it's not there? If it's, it's gone. Now, if you ate up everything in bar number two, so what are you going to do now? It's too late. You messed up, right? Some say that you should still go back and take and take Tumas or Mises, even though you ate it already. But that doesn't make it, well, it's not logical. But some Farshim say that. But let's say you haven't eaten the stuff yet in number, bar number two. You set up the table, you're having a little kiddish there in bar number two, and you set it all up and you take Tumas Mises. Let me go back and check. You go back to bar number one, it's gone. If that stuff's gone, so you t- it doesn't work. So how far do you have to go back and check? Let's say you were away for a week. You left bar number one a week ago. Right now, you come back and you say it's gone. Well, let's say I take I took Tumas or Maestro several times during that week. How far back do I have to go to check if it's gone now? We'll see what this means is that you have to be concerned. Remember, when you left bar number one, the stuff was there, the produce was there, and the money was there in your desk. Now, when you come back and you find that it's gone, how far back do you have to assume it was gone? Today is Friday. Let's say I left on Sunday this week, six to five days ago, right? I left five days ago. Now it's not, I come back on Friday, it's not there. How long can I assume that it was there? So Rebeleza says, you could only have to be concerned that maybe it was gone in the last 24 hours. So anything you did, let's say on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, that's okay. You don't have to take too much mice again. If you still have the food, you don't have to bother, you can assume it was okay. You go back ace to ace. We have the same concept of ace to ace. And in the Gemara Nida, you know, if you break 24 hours uh, when she finds a dam, et cetera, how far back does she have to assume that she was stomach? So the concept of ace ice is 24 hours, I got to go back 24 hours, give her a blood. So we'll have another sheet in the Gemara. All right, that's what you have to do. But assuming generally, if you didn't go back and find that the produce was gone, the money was gone, you can assume it's still there because Masha Haya Ze Masha Yesh Hayom, right? Whatever it was before, that's Chazaka, you can assume it's still there. Rabbi Yudah says another thing about checking. Now we talk about you check the produce that was gone or it was spoiled. Rabbi Yudah says when you have produce, b'shlosha prakim both can I say yain. See, wine, let's say I have wine. What are the things in you have to take from us mices on? Wine, oil, and the five grains. In we take on fruits and vegetables also, other things. But generally, those things. Now, wine is a doraisi, you have to take from us mices. But if I had wine, let's say, in one location, and I had a wine in another location, and I take from one or the other, I got to make sure that it's still wine. Let's say the wine went bad. That's not good, right? It's not, it's not it's like vinegar. So Rabbi Yoda says that three times during the seasons, during the year, but you, ch- you should check the wine to make sure it's okay. Meaning, because if I'm going to take wine from a location number one, location number two, I better make sure that the wine in number one is okay. So there's three times that you should check it to make sure that it's okay. When, when the easterly wind blows, we'll see what that means. When the easterly wind blows on matzah sukkus, on matzah sukkus, if there's an easterly wind, then you better check that it's okay. But saw smadar, when the blossom, when the grapes begin to blossom, the leaves fall off and the buds start showing. And when the liquids, the waters, the, the liquid comes into the grapes, when it's at a, at a later stage. So in these uh, cases, right, in these cases, uh, you should, at these times during the year, you should check to make sure that the wine is okay. Rashi says the first of the wide lines of Rashi. You left that wine in bar number one, or uh, whatever you call that, wine cellar number one. You should check. It's off the boat. Shema hichmes. Maybe it came bad. It got sour or or uh, or vinegary. They ain't You can't take truma from that on wine. It's got to be from wine on wine. And therefore, you should check at least three times during the year. That's what Rabbi Yudah says. He's not really arguing with Rabbi Lazar. He's just giving you another idea. My me'isle. So what do we mean when we said, I left the barn on, on Sunday. Today is Friday. And I just took some trumas and maizras, assuming that the stuff in number bar number one, I took trumas and maizras, I separated from the stuff in number one on number two. 
Now is Friday, five, six days later, five days later. And when I uh, go back now to bar number one, I find that the stuff is gone. So Rabbi Lazar said, you got to, you have to be choshish ace la ace. What does that mean, ace la ace? Rabbi Yochum over ace la ace, Meaning, when I check it now, let's say on Friday, and I find that it's gone, so that means that anything I've done in the last 24 hours is, is, is suspect. Meaning if I took from Mr. Mises, let's say last night, Thursday night, you know what? Maybe the stuff was gone already. I better take from Mr. Mises again, especially if I haven't eaten the stuff yet, right? So I could take from Mr. Mises on that. In other words, I look at the last 24 hours, last 24 hours going back since I checked it now. On Friday, I checked it. I find the stuff's gone. Anything I've done in the last 24 hours is suspect. There's no good. I got to do it over again. If I took too much mice on Wednesday, which is longer than 24 hours since now, or Tuesday or Monday for sure, that's okay. That's what Rabbi Yochanan says. Rabbi Lazar ben Antignus on Mishim, Rabbi Lazar he says, no. May ace la ace shall hanacha, when I left the stuff. In other words, what does it mean? That anything going back till 24 hours, let's say I left it at Sunday at noon, that's when I put the stuff down in bar number one. I have to go back till Monday at noon. That was, I only have 24 hours. Anything I did from Sunday at noon till Monday at noon, I can assume it was still there. I left it there at Sunday at noon up until Monday at noon. But anything I did in the last few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no good, no good. Meaning not 24 hours since I checked it now on Friday, but I go back till 24 hours subsequent to the time that I placed it on Sunday, meaning only till Monday at noon. So, so we have these two different opinions here. We have Rabbi Yochanan, and we have Rabbi Lazar ben Antignus, who said, name Rabbi Lazar ben Yana. Now the Gemara is going to prove like Rabbi Yochanan. It's not the top line on Lamed Alpha and Beis. Imavdo Reza, Choshesh, May Ace, La Ace. It says, Misha said, if you went back and you found that the stuff wasn't there in bar number one, it's lost, you have to be concerned 24 hours back. May Ace, La Ace, from 24 hours. If it's from 24 hours since I checked it now on Friday, shopper makes sense. Yeah, it says, How far? 24 hours back. If it's 24 hours from Sunday till Monday, in other words, I got to go all the way back until Monday. I may ace lace. I may ace lace. I should say, ace lace means 24 hours, right? But it means if I checked on Friday, how far back do I have to check? all the way back until 24 hours since I placed it. It doesn't make sense to say you check it 24 hours. What do you mean 24 hours? The 24 hours is from the time of placement on Sunday until Monday at noon. So now it's Friday, I should, the, 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 the language should say, how far back do you check? You have to check it back from the time now, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, all the way back until 24 hours, until 24 hours since you placed it. If you say I'm checking it, you have to check it back, back how far, 24 hours. So you go, I, I, right now I found that it's missing. I have to be concerned that anything I did in the last 24 hours. So you can say, you have to be concerned 24 hours back. Many slice means 24 hours back. But if you say it's going, you have to go back till Monday, you have to be concerned. Anything you did on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday is no good. That means you have to be concerned going back until 24 hours. The 24 hours is not 24 hours from now on Friday. It's 24 hours from Monday at noon, uh, up until that point, from Sunday till Monday, that was okay. But anything I did back until until 24 hours since I placed it, you should, you, the word until is necessary there. Because I'm talking about Friday, I'm not checking about checking back 24 hours, I'm checking back until 24 hours since I placed it. So it should say odd, that's his concern. Well, Akasha, it's like Akasha on the second sheet. And therefore the presumption is that you, that you have a chazaka, what you placed there on Sunday is, was good on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. But if I found on Friday that it's missing, I got to be concerned anything I did in the last 24 hours since Friday, when I, when I checked it, meaning from Thursday to Friday, that is suspect and I'd have to redo it. I'm Rabbi Lezer. So Rabbi Lezer said in the Mishnah, you got to check back 24 hours. That's it, right? Anything you did on Tuesday, let's say, is fine. Today's Friday. I'm just and you found out that the stuff is missing or gone, the money's gone, the produce is gone, the trumas and mices wasn't really taken, it's gone. How far back? Until 24 hours, you have to be concerned. Anything before that is probably okay. Now, Rebbe Lazar is explaining Rebbe Lazar. How does that make sense? 
So this is Rabbi Lazar says Rashi. This is Rabbi Lazar ben Padas, who is the who is the Amora. Rabbi Lazar uh, Padas is in the Gemara. Rabbi Lazar ben Shemua is in the Mishnah and the Brisa. Rabbi Lazar ben Shemua is the Tan. Rabbi Lazar is the is the Amora. So here Rabbi Lazar the Amora. Rabbi Lazar ben Padas is explaining Rabbi Lazar ben Shemua. Our Rabbi Lazar Chalukah and Rabbi Lazar. His colleagues disagree with him. In other words, he says he only has to be concerned twenty four hours back. He says no, no, no. Uh, some disagree and say you always have to be concerned all the way back. It's not mikvah. You have a mikvah. Mikvah has to be 40 saw in order to be kosher. Let's say it was measured. Now you measure it. You know, once in a while they come to measure it and it's missing. It's only got 39. So anything used, anything that was purified in this mikvah, whether it's kalim uh, used for trumas and maestras, or it was. Um, uh, could be tummy, but let's say at least for Truma, or if it was a person, person went to the mikvah. Here's what, yeah, people, some people go to the mikvah, right, every day. Let's say it was checked today. The mikvah was checked. Last time you checked it, a few weeks ago, we had plenty of water in there. Now you check today, it's, it's only got 39, so it's no good, right? So let's say I went to the mikvah, or a woman went to the mikvah Monday this week, earlier this week. She says, that's no good. Whether it's Kalim or people that, that went into mikvah, whether remember you have a cloud that we learned from Sota that Suffolk Tam B'shusiyachid is Tamei Suffolk Tam B'shusarabim is Tar. Here he says whether it's B'shusiyachid or B'shusarabim, where Suffolk is normally Tar, that's everything is Tamei now. Why? Because clearly the mikvah is no good. Now it doesn't say the mikvah is not good just for the last 24 hours. You have to assume you checked it a couple of weeks ago, right? So why don't you assume it was okay until let's say 24 hours ago, like Reb Lez says on a Mishnah, right? When the stuff is missing, uh, the, you went back to Barnum where it's missing, only if the word lasts 24 hours. For that, it's okay. Here he doesn't say that. He says all the way back until the last time it was checked. If it wasn't checked until two weeks ago, anything done in the last two weeks is no good. It doesn't say 24 hours. So he disagrees. Now, why Why don't you say, wait a minute. So the Gemara says, cheat, isn't that obvious? Cheat the, the Chalukin. Isn't it obvious that they argue? They don't say anything about 24 hours. Mile. The same in my love. I pray may I may think when the mission, when this mission says by the mikvah, says anything done last, uh, uh, you found that it's missing, anything you've done going back is no good, is come. Maybe that only means going back 24 hours. He didn't say may slays, but maybe that's what it means. Mashmal, no, it doesn't say he didn't say may slays, it's not a slays. In other words, your blood says you only be concerned last 24 hours. Whatever went bad, whether the food went bad, the food's missing, the money's missing, the mikvah's no good, only 24 hours, says Rabbi Lazar. His colleagues at the degree said, no, all the way back to the last time it was checked. So you, have to, you, don't, you don't have that, that, uh, that assumption. Now, why don't you say, Safatam Rishis Rabbim is tar? We have a call we said before, Safatam Rishis Yochid is Tamei, Safatam Rishis Rabbim is tar. So Rashi explains, that's Dafka, when you had a Suffolk, there was some Tumen in Rishis Rabbim, let's say a dead Sheretz. Did you touch it or not? So you can argue you didn't touch it. You don't know. So we learn now from Sota, only by Sota to Suffolk, and that was Mishas Yochid. We don't know for sure. The definition of Sota is we don't know for sure if she committed adultery or not. So there, Suffolk comes Mishas Yochid is Tame, and you know, she has to separate from her husband and from the uh, uh, alleged adulterer until it's uh, determined what she did or whatever. Um, and Mishas Rabim is Tar, because there you could say, Maybe I didn't touch the tummy. We don't know for sure if it was tummy or not. But over here, we're talking about a person went to the mikvah because they were tummy. And now the question is, was the, was the, was the mikvah okay? Well, when you look at the mikvah right now, in other words, we said before, Rabbi says there's a chazaka that the food is still there in bar number one or the money's still there in my day. Because he had such a chazaka, there you could argue. By the mikvah, though, the mikvah had a chazaka, but this guy had a chazaka that they're tummy, right? You put the kalim in the mikvah because they were tummy. So, you know, it's not, a, it's not exactly like a suffix. If I was a suffolk, if I touched some tumor bushes or robin, so you could say, maybe I didn't touch it, right? So you could go with that cloud. But over here, the man was tummy. Was the mikvah good or not good? Right now, it's not good. So how far back do we go? Rabbi Lezer and the Mishra, Rabbi Lezer, Ben, Shamua says only 24 hours. Uh, the rabbi, these rabbis disagree, and they say, no, going back until the last time it was checked. Abir Megimel Prakhi says in three times, a ton of, when should the wine be checked? Because this is when things can go bad. Bikidim shalmat kufa. When the easterly wind, Kedem is like the Kedem, from the easterly wind blows on Matzah Sukkot, when only if the new, uh, the autumnal equinox has happened, meaning that's how it normally is, that Sukkot comes out after 
the uh, after the beginning of fall, after the autumnal equinox. That's the tukufa, the season began. However, if Sukkot was really early in the summer, then this doesn't apply. That's the Kabbalah they had. Tanya Rabbi Omer. There are three times during the season when you can sell when you can sell tfua, you sell produce. There's only because it's a good price then. Lefnei era before seeding, before they planted. Shas era when they planted. We will cross a Pesach and let's say two weeks or 15 days before Pesach. That's when you get a good price for the tfua, and that's when you sell. That's a good time to sell the tfua. Afterwards, presumably, it gets cheaper. Three times during the season do you sell wine? For us at Pesach, 15 days before Pesach, for us at Ses, 15 days before Shavuos, for us at Chai, 15 days before Sukkot. The Shemin, what about selling oil? After ten of Shavuos. What's the point of this? I mean, you can sell whatever you want. What, what are these ideas? These are these are the good times to sell. He's telling you like a market, uh, giving you good advertising. You know, when, when is a good time to market your stuff? My Let's say two people own something together. Now, the halach in the Torah is not like the common law, but if two people own something together, if I'm a, if I, if I'm a partner with you in a building, and halachically, if I sold it, even if you're not around, it's sold. You may not agree to the sale, but I own the whole thing and you own the whole thing. I could sell it. That's the halacha. However, you shouldn't really do that, right? You should only do it with the heskem. So he's saying like this. If a partner sells at these proper times to sell, right? Even if the price went up afterwards, the one who wasn't involved cannot claim, hey, you didn't, you didn't ask me because these are good times to sell. That's the idea for Shutfin. He can't have a claim. Now, again, it's sold anyway. The deal is a deal. Shutf Maida Asasif, a Shutf, not like common law. Common law, if we own something together, presumably we need both signatures, right? But in, in Alacha, if I own it, I could act on, on behalf of the, uh, uh, I'm an owner just like you're an owner and I could sell it. Okay, it's a good sale, but you could have a complaint to me. Here the Gemara says, right, let's say if I sell, if we were partners in a field and we have this produce, whether it's wine or whatever, produce or oil, tells you the good time to sell, Mainaf Kamina, that if I sold at that time, you can't come with a complaint to me. If I sold at a bad time, right, when the price was bad, was, was low, and you could say, listen, would you sell it for me? You could have a complaint to me. We could have a fight. Then maybe I'll have to compensate you in some way. Uh, even though the sale is valid, I'd have to compensate you. But if you these times, it's okay. You can't bail. What about after those times? My, what about after those times? I'm a rubber. Call you a cricket. Once those times have passed already, those are the best times. If you haven't sold by then, then any time is as good. It's, you, you know, whatever. There's no specific time to sell. After that, it's always a good time. Probably the prices are already lower, but any time is a good set time to sell. Once we talk about this easterly wind, there's this easterly wind that comes out at the that that uh, that blows at the end of a circus when it's already in the fall. So we say you should check the wine then because that could bring trouble. That wine could bring trouble. So he brings now some sukkim talking about these winds. You know, there's four there's four the dirt. You could have a northerly wind, a southerly wind, easterly wind, westerly wind. Baikas Rach Hashem Shabbosik says in Yonah. When the sun came up, Hashem appointed Ruach Kadim an easterly wind, Chavishis. Now, Chavishis is a strange word. Is it like Chavisha, like a plow, or does it mean something else? Like Chavish, you can't hear. Uh, you know, what, what does that mean? Chavishis, my Chavishis. Amravida Bishashim and Hashemes, when this easterly wind blows, Osa Klam Klam Yam, it makes furrows in the ocean or in the sea. In other words, it's very strong, a strong wind. Amravida Rabba. It says right afterwards, the sun beat down after the after right after that, but then that same posture. The next part says, when the sun came up, Hashem appointed this easterly wind, the strong easterly wind. And then it says, and the sun beat down on Yonah's head by Salaf and he fainted. So it's not a strong wind, it sounds like a quieting wind. When the easterly wind blows, it quiets all the other uh, winds, which are strong. As we'll see, the southerly wind, which is very strong and damaging, the easterly wind is like hot and quiets it down. That's why when Hashem blew the easterly wind, Yonah got hot. That's what happened. It quiets all the uh, all the other winds. Your clothes are hot. When the land that was 
uh, had a wind coming from the south was quieted by the easterly wind. That's what we mean over here. Um, that Meshach is called Ruchos, Chemashket Eris Pudom, Shetzinas Rashi says, Shetzinas Ruch Domus Shoketas, when the, 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 uh, the uh, coolness of the southerly wind is quieted down by the easterly wind. And what quiets it down? The easterly wind, which quiets it down, it quiets all the other ends. The other, pardon? The easterly wind I don't know. Just pre presumably, I, I don't know. Maybe that would, that was a miracle, and this is a miracle. You know, that's a, that, that was presumably just a special miracle. This was uh, the way the winds blow in Eretz Yisrael. At least in those days, that's how it was. <laughs> you know, if if uh, meteorologically this is, uh, you know, this works, you know, I would assume that the winds can come from any place and do. Sometimes it does this, sometimes that. The Gemara says that the the easterly winds, the the winds. Have purposes and uh, presumably for all of Earth, as we'll see. How do you explain that, that those words? When are your clothes warm? When the uh, land is quieted from the south, because when the easterly wind blows, it quiets all the other winds and it brings heat. So the easterly wind brings heat. Story of Yosef, they were sitting. Geneva Geneva was a, uh, a rabbi, uh, and he was passing by. Omer one of these two rabbis, Rabun Rechista, said to the other, Nakim Mikame, let's get up in front of him, let's stand up. The Barayan, who, because he's a big Tamar Chachim, he's a Ben Torah, right? He's a, he's a Ben Torah. We should stand up. No, I'm going to get up for a, this quarrelsome person. He's always making fights. Uh, he always gets into dis disputes with the other rabbis. So he came and said, you know, they were arguing about whether they should get up. They were arguing whether they should get up for this guy who was a little bit, he was a Tamachacham, but on the other hand, he was quarrelsome. Meanwhile, he came over to them. He approached him. What are you talking about? Like, what are you learning now? Baruchas, we're discussing the winds. Now, uh, they weren't necessarily talking about the winds, right? This is just a story. So it could be they were talking about winds because they were talking about like like a wind bag, you know, like a, they were talking about was he a Balgaiv or not for arguing. So they weren't exactly lying, you know. They said we we're talking about w big winded people, you know. They said winds, okay, so they weren't lying. So you're talking about the winds. I'll tell you something that Rav Chanan Bar Rav said. Four winds blow each day. There's a northerly wind, a southerly wind. With the other winds, the northerly wind always has to blow. If the northerly wind does, if there's no northerly wind, the world couldn't exist. In other words, if the northerly, if the northerly wind stopped for a moment, the, you know, the earth would fall out of its orbit. You know, the whole world couldn't exist. I feel even for one moment. The worst wind is the southerly wind. The southerly wind is damaging. It brings cold and it's damaging. Mamida, if it wouldn't be the Ben Nets, the son of the hawk, that it's a kind of a, uh, a malach. If it wouldn't be the malach Mamida, uh, which holds it back, holds back the southerly wind, the whole world would be destroyed. The southerly wind would just push the earth out of its orbit if it wouldn't be for this malach who holds it back. Shanemar, does this uh, does this hawk extend its uh, its um, wings? Through your understanding, Yifros Kanav the Taman spread out its wings to the south. In other words, the south, where the southerly wind comes from, this uh, Benet spreads so out its the winds. Wind comes wind. From the south. No, it comes yeah. from the south. The one that comes from the south is damaging, and the world would, would destroy the whole world if it wouldn't be for this yeah. hawk. And also, also the hawk holds it back, but also the northerly wind protects us because the northerly wind blows at the same time. In other words, they sort of cancel each other out. So the northerly wind has to blow with all the winds. If we, the northerly wind has to blow when there's an easterly wind, a westerly wind, and a southerly wind. As, as far as Eretz Yisrael goes, say the westerly wind comes from the, comes from the sea. Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak, these two rabbis have Yosef, they were also sitting. Have a cholaf v'ozel of Nachman Yaakov. Now, <clears throat> Rabbi and Rabbi Nachman were two rabbis, they were sitting, and Rabbi Nachman by Yaakov passed by the Yosef Bugoharka. He was sitting in a golden carriage. But you couldn't see him inside. 
Uparsal Asar Velikarti. He had like a, uh, a cape or a cloak uh, made out of a, a fancy bluish material. Seven Chelis Rosh says Domen Likarti. Like bluish karti is usually greenish, right? Like a crest, whatever, but it's like greenish, bluish. He had this fancy garment on him and they couldn't see who was inside the carriage. In other words, Rav Nachman by Yaakov, not this, there's two, don't mix them up. Rav Nachman by Yitzhak was sitting with Rava. And Rav Nachman by Yaakov passed by in this golden carriage, meaning it was a government, you know, from the monarchy there, from the king, uh, a government official was in there, but they couldn't see him inside because he was, in, you know, he was covered by the carriage and his, uh, and his garment. Rava, Azol Rabbi went over, listened to, you know, like the mayor is driving by, the, the government officials coming by, went over to him. He didn't approach it. Omar, he says, okay, these are the people from the Exilarch's house, you know, fish, these are government officials. I'm also, I don't need their help. Why? Because I'm a son-in-law of, I'm a son-in-law of the Exilarch himself, of the Reish Galusa. So I don't need, uh, I don't need his help. Omer don't mention Rish and it's probably somebody from the government official. Rabbi Sarchlu, Rabbi needs him. You know, Rabbi maybe needs a favor or something. You know, go over government official. Um, I want to say that Rabbi bribed him, but you know how it is. I know a lot I don't need him. I don't need him. I'm a son-in-law. I'm I'm already in there. You know, get a chazer to Rav Nach, get a chazer to Rav Nach by Habe. Once, Rav Nach by Yitzchak, who was sitting with Rabbi, saw. When he saw it, as the carriage got closer or the door opened up or whatever, he saw that was Rav Yaakov, who was a chosher person, he went over and he approached him. Now, Rav Nachman Yaakov was sitting in the carriage. They didn't have air conditioning in the carriages in those days, right? These horse riding carriages did not have air conditioning. They didn't have automatic so, windows? Right, not even automatic windows. So he was hot. So he bared his, his arm. He was just, you know, he bared his arm. He lifted up like his garment to try to get the to get some coolness in there. Omar, Shad Yenashiv. He said that, that what is Shad Yenashiv? Rashi says Hashida, the carriage or the box over here, Menashevus, is being blown by the wind. I mean, when he felt the wind, he said the carriage is being blown by the wind as he, as he bared his arm. Tosa says that we're speaking about, he, he's speaking about the easterly wind, even though Shad is really a word for the southerly wind. Rashi, the Tosa brings down here that the each of the winds had a particular name, and the southerly wind was actually called Shadya. But he said over here he was referring to the easterly wind, Shadya Nashva. In other words, as we said before on this page, that the easterly wind is, is brings the heat, the southerly wind brings the cold and would destroy the world if it wouldn't be for the hawk, the malach, so and the southerly. In that case, southerly wind means coming from the north. No, I think it means coming from the south. Why would it bring the cold? No, the, no, oh, you're thinking of the North Pole. And also the no. East. No, you know, usually, no, I think, I think when he means, no, he means. Yeah, yeah. The sea would be the cold. Yeah. It would be cold. Yeah, yeah. No, the easterly wind, easterly wind means it's, it's coming from the east. Coming from the east, and that brings the warmth. The easterly wind, you said, is bringing the warmth. The southerly wind is bringing the cold, even though it goes against your logic because you're thinking of the north as a cold, but the south pole is cold too. You know, so I think that's, that's what it means. The easterly wind it comes from the east, and the um, and uh, so he said he was talking about. So different ways to understand it. Shadi means that uh, Rashi says that the carriage is being blown by the wind, but Tosa explains that Shadi Nasha is referring to the easterly wind, which brings the heat. That makes sense over here, even though. This usually it's the southerly wind which is called shadi. Anyway, um, so uh, toast itself seems to be strange. You know why? Why would you? If if the southerly wind is called shadi, why is he referring to the easterly wind? But in any case, it's the easterly wind that brought the heat, and that's what he complained about. Amarava, Hafi Amarav, Rav said that the southern the easterly wind is so bad that it destroys. It brings tremendous heat. Ishma Pelospo, a pregnant woman can lose her child just because of the strong easterly wind. Even a pearl in the ocean, pearl that's in the ocean, in its cover, right, in its receptacle, can also uh, get spoiled by it, can, can rot. If uh, uh, a man has had deal with, uh, with his wife and the Sheikh Vazera is less than three days old and it hasn't taken root yet, Sheikh Vazera has, uh, hasn't yet. Um, um, fertilize the egg, 
Afilu Shikvazer Shibmei Isha Misereches will also get putrefied or get spoiled and rot and rise. Amar Dachma Yitzchak Veshlosh Mikor Echadosh. They each learn different things. I mean, obviously that uh, uh, the one who says only the Shikvazera got destroyed, maybe he wouldn't agree with Isha Mapelos, but once there's a fetus already growing, maybe he wouldn't. But these are the different opinions. They all based it. Shlosh Mikor Echad. They all dash in one pasuk. Pasuk says in Oshea Ki Hu Bein Achim Yapri. He will grow or multiply between brothers. Yavo kodim b'ishli when come ruach Hashem a wind from God mi midbar from the from the uh, desert like you said Michael right the easily will come from the desert Ola will go up the yavo the yavo the yavo the source will dry up imish makaro zum makarshlisha that means the woman's source meaning in her womb that will dry up and the fetus will die the yecher of mayano and his source his spring will dry up that shich b'zerosh shemeisha. Right, that uh, that came from his spring, that Sheikh Mazera, if it's only three days old, says Rashi, because within three days, that will also uh, spoil and rot. Who Yisha Otsar Kolkechem, the answer the plastic finishes off, it will spoil the treasure of all the precious vessels. What does that mean? Zumagal Shabiyam. That's even the pearl in the ocean, pearl in the sea will also uh, rot and spoil. Omrava. Adi Sarahu. Adi means that uh, this, right? Uh, these words, Sarah, they came from Surah. Surah, the kind, because they're very medayic in the Psukim, and they try to, they interpret the, the words of the Pasik as referring to these three things. The Daikikra, they're very uh, specific and examine the uh, Psukim carefully. Maiki Hube Nachim Yafi. But what is that? The beginning of the Pasik says, it is between brothers, it will multiply. And then it says, the easterly wind come, will destroy it. Amrava Afilu Shufsa Bakufina Damara, even the handle in the cavity of the plow, roughly will, will get loosened. In other words, there's a cavity in the plow where you put the handle in. When the easterly wind comes, it's so it, it heats it up so much that the handle becomes loose in this cavity, in the place that it sticks in the in the plow, it'll loosen. Yes, Mara Afilu Sifsa Badafna, even a peg in the wall, Dafna will also become loosened by this heavy heat. Even a cane in a wicker basket that's already, you know, already put together uh, and woven will also become weak, loosened by the, this uh, easterly wind, which is very strong. I don't know how you call it yet. That ends off the parak. Uh, tomorrow's daf is daf lambe, so it should be on the podcast before you close. So let's us see the Mishnah. This is an important, this parak is a famous parak in this, this, this sort of begins the Another topic. Till now, we were talking about you bring me your get from overseas. What happens? The guy's dead, alive. You know. We, uh, uh, now we talk about other issues, which are very important issues. A person sends his get. Uh, a man sends his get to his wife. When is she divorced? When she when she picks it when she receives it. She can't pick it up into when it's hand. into her hand or into her shliach's hand. Now let's say he changes his mind on the way while the guy was on the way. He changed his mind. Right? Or we learned before, if you know the guy died, right? You can't assume that he died. But if you know he died, it's not a get, right? Not a get, totally decent in her hand. If, if she sent the shliach to the husband and he gave it to the shliach, then she's divorced and maybe it's her shliach. But if it's his shliach, she's not divorced until, until, until she gets it. So let's say shliach get the he gave a shliach. He met the shliach on the way. He sent the shliach and somehow he met him on the way or he, or he, he uh, went out looking for him, and he found him. Oh, so he sent the shliach to call him back. He changed his mind. Changed his mind. Get I gave you no good. Buckle, I'm voiding it. I raise a buckle. You can void it. You can say, I don't want to, you're no longer my shliach. I, 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 I disappoint you. <laughs> I, I, I relinquish your job. You're no longer my shliach. Or Kida makes a lishta. Let's say he got there to his wife. The man himself got to his wife before the shliach got there. Oh, so he sent the shliach to Vomer. The get that I sent you, you haven't received it yet. It's bottle. It's void. It's no get. I raise a bottle. You could do that. However, once the get has received, as soon as she received the get, remember, and there's Adam who saw it, right? She has to have Adam there. She's the horse that second. There's Adam who saw it. That's it. Uh, he can't change his mind after the fact. He can remarry her if it's not a coin, right? So once you get her hand, you get her hand. Now, okay, that's the rule. That's very simple. If she hasn't received yet, he can be a vatlet. originally, how you owe Sebastian for Mokimacher, 
originally they used to set up a fest. And, you know, let's say he was far away. He was in New York and he sent to get to Israel. It took six months for the guy to come. And he decided he didn't want to divorce her. So he sets up a court, let's say, in, in New York or in Haifa, some other place. And he says, I'm a vatlo at Makamacher, I'm a vatlo. And that was it. That was it. And he was vatlo. Now the shliach is still on his way. The shliach is still on his way. What will happen now? The shliach comes there. They haven't heard. They didn't communications. They didn't have a cell yeah, phone. She gets scared. She's going to get remarried. They're going to have over there because he never divorced her. And he was matakin shaloyah, so they shouldn't do that. Because of tikkun because he might make mamzerim. There's another sheet in the Gemara we'll see on Sunday. This is tomorrow's Daf Lamed Beis, which will be on the podcast on Sunday. We're going to pick it up from Daf Lamed Gimel. That's Sunday's Daf. There's a two dots about 10 lines down on the page. That's where we're going to start. And there's another sheet of there that the tikkun no, she might hear about it, but she'll be in Aguna, right? She's far away. Now what's happening? He wants to divorce her, etc. but he's in another location. Now uh, she might hear about it. She won't get remarried, but she'll be in Iguna. She, she's nobody to marry now. She's far away. Her husband left her. He's in another place. Those are the different sheets. But the basic idea is that uh, the push up shot is that don't do that because she may not hear about it. If you if you make a, you, you avoid it without her knowing about it, the Shliach gets there, gives her a divorce. It's not divorce. Right? They, they think she's divorced, but it turns out she's not divorced because he had he avoided the get before the Shliach got there and she might get remarried and we have Mamzerim. That's a real problem. That's a real problem. So we'll see the famous sugya we'll get to on Sunday, Mirza Shem. Make sure you learn tomorrow's stuff. Have a good Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos. Thank you.